this is steel jaundiced. Uh, this topic is uh, from the CCFOP case, clinical 50 clinical cases of foundation of practice. Max is a full term male infant with a birth weight of 3380 grams, who was noted to have continuing jaundice on day 19 of life. He was born by a normal vaginal delivery to a primary parous Caucasian mother whose blood group is O positive. Maternal records do not indicate any antenatal problem and he received intramuscular vitamin K at birth. You see lots of information like a term newborn, uh, he is having jaundice at day 19 of life, he was born by NVD and mother's blood group was O positive, maternal record has no problems or no infection. Okay. Jaundice was first reported by midwife on day 5 when the newborn blood spot screening was performed. He was said to be breastfeeding well and his current weight is 3600 3, grams. On examination, his temperature is 36.7 degrees Celsius, heart rate 130 per minute and respiratory rate 40 per minute. He appears well and visible jaundice of skin and conjunctiva. His liver was just palpable but there was no splenomegaly. So which one of the following would make you concerned about serious liver disease? Always remember, in most cases, like 70 to 80 percent of neonate might have jaundice. You all know, as you practice as a pediatric doctor in your respective hospitals, like most of them are breast, breast milk jaundice. Okay, so if a jaundice is appearing after the day three of life, uh, it is always considered as physiological jaundice or breast milk jaundice. If it continuous more than like 21 days or appearing within the three days of life then it is considered that there is something probably some pathological causes for this jaundice so to assume some serious liver disease what things you should consider first you have to consider that since when the jaundice has been noticed you have to consider the history of stool and urine you see this option is the answer history of pale stool and dark jaundice is the dark urine is the most uh, important red flag so you see whenever a child is passing pale stool or whiter stool that means there is some problem inside the body that that jaundice, that bilirubin is not being converted to converted and it is not passing with the stool but usually our stool is yellow colored why because bilirubin is mixed with that and dark urine what does that mean that dark urine is due to excessive bilirubin so whenever a child is having pale stool and a dark urine it is the cause of it might be there is any serious liver disease okay and the intervention should be prompt that why, that's why we have to look for these things whenever a child is coming with jaundice we have to look for these symptoms okay then the initial blood tests were taken and initial result was hemoglobin 103 gram per liter which is in our manner 10.3 packed cell volume white blood cell platelet serum bilirubin 232 among them conjugated bilirubin is only 6 so it means among 232 conjugated bilirubin is only 6 what does it mean that among this total serum bilirubin the part of conjugated bilirubin or the ratio of conjugate unconjugated bilirubin is more and the ratio of conjugated bilirubin is less whenever you will see that the conjugated bilirubin is more than 20 or 30 percent of entire bilirubin always think that there is a pathological cause okay so if again i am repeating if the conjugated bilirubin is more than 30 percent of total serum bilirubin more than 20 or 30 percent of total serum bilirubin you will always consider that there might be a pathological cause and it is not normal okay so which one of the following investigation should you request next next you see we have found conjugated bilirubin less so there might be no severe um, problem in the liver okay that's why we will not suggest liver ultrasound or thyroid function because this child recently had the hill prick test and we have uh, thyroid function is included in that if there is any problem in thyroid we could have known Al alpha 1 antitrypsin levels it is a more uh, difficult test like whenever you think something very serious you can proceed blood culture can be an option but 
in case in case of blood culture you should have some features of uh, infection no otherwise you cannot do a blood culture so what left urine microscopy and culture so why urine microscopy and culture is important it is important because uh, in case of uti of newborn jaundice is a very significant feature having vomiting repeatedly and having jaundice so in case of urinary tract infection uh, in case of newborn the most significant feature is vomiting and um, jaundice a newborn is not going to give you any other history or the mother cannot understand that there is difficulty in passing urine or there is burning sensation the child might cry the neonate might cry while passing urine and um, these features but in case of newborn having vomiting and jaundice is the most important feature for uti so as we are not suspecting that this is a very serious condition we will start with urine microscopy and culture what is the most likely diagnosis ab or rh incompatibility biliary atresia breast milk jaundice congenital cmv and hereditary spherocytosis you see mother is o positive so there is no problem should be about rh incompatibility maybe abo but that is a very minimal complication that is not very common biliary atresia no it is a serious condition and serious surgical procedure is needed so as the stool is normal stool is not pale if we found that chalky white stool or the very dark yellow color urine we could have suggested biliary atresia it is a regular kind of jaundice like the conjugate the uh, percentage of conjugated bilirubin is less among the entire bilirubin so breast milk jaundice can be a possibility congenital cmv infection no because it's already written in the question that there is no problem you see it's already written in the question that maternal records do not indicate any antenatal problems and any antenatal problems okay so we will we will not think about any congenital cmv infection and hereditary spherocytosis is not something that will be diagnosed that that point there might be some other features also okay there will be very um, hemoglobin will be very low but in our we can see 103 okay so the answer will be breast milk jaundice jaundice is common in newborn infant approximately 60% of term and 80% of preterm babies usually develop jaundice in the first week of life what i told you before that uh, we should be able to indicate the pathological jaundice indications okay not the physiological one why when we will think pathological this box is important whenever you see the early onset of clinical jaundice within the first 24 hours of age rapid rise of serum bilirubin which is more than 100 micromole per liter per 24 hours sick newborn with jaundice serum bilirubin more than 20, 250 micromole by 48 hours of age or more than 300 by 72 hours of age failure to respond to phototherapy prolonged jaundice like more than 14 decibel uh, 14 days in a term infant and more than 21 days in preterm infant remember these these things are very important while whenever you are going to diagnose any any clinical case you have to remember these days and the baby is term or preterm conjugated bilirubin level uh, of more than 35 as i told you conjugated bilirubin should be more okay and pale chalky stool and dark urine memorize this box this box is very important and while diagnosis physiological diagnosing physiological and pathological one this box will help you the baby in this scenario has prolonged jaundice prolonged jaundice is identified as jaundice jaundice persisting beyond the first 14 days in term and 21 days in preterm screening investigation from from uh, for prolonged jaundice are listed you see this term baby although we are suspecting that it is a physiological jaundice or breast milk jaundice but the duration has passed 14 days okay so we now we have to look for another cause for that reason we need to do some investigation like we have to do the conjugated and total serum bilirubin full blood count and blood film blood group and direct anti globulin test thyroid function test urine microscopy and culture urine for reducing substances liver function test etc screening investigation for prolonged jaundice in neonate 
it is important to differentiate between conjugated and unconjugated jaundice as the underlying diagnosis for each will be different. Understanding the pathology of bilirubin production is very important. Okay, the red cell will be, uh, all, you all know the bilirubin, uh, bilirubin production and absorption. So, we will read this in my next, uh, in next 3 to 4 page letter. Uh, we will study this from our science of, science of pediatrics books which is recognized by Royal College. So this baby has unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. NICE guidelines provide recommendations for the investigation and management of jaundice in babies with this baby needing to have thyroid function test, urine microscopy and culture, urine reducing substance to complete the initial prolonged prolong jaundice screen. You see this box, these are the common causes of unconjugated jaundice. So for this we have to rule out this. You see hemolysis due to rhesus or ABA or other isoimmunization, hereditary spherocytosis, other red cell morphological abnormality, enzyme deficiency like gluco, um, G6PD, pyruvate kinase, breast milk jaundice. Infection including UTI, endocrine conditions like hypothyroidism, hypopituitarism metabolic cause such as glucuronal transferase deficiency, galactosemia, etc. Okay. So you see UTI is one of the most important thing. Breastfeed babies are most likely to form, uh, most likely than formula fed babies to develop jaundice both within the first week of life as well as beyond 2 to 3 weeks of age. Early jaundice in breastfeed babies is thought to be due to combination of factors such as dehydration, poor gut motility, failure to pass meconium. All of these tend to cause the increased enterohepatic circulation of the bilirubin. That's why they have the breast milk. So in case of uh, term or preterm babies, breast milk jaundice is very common. And what is the treatment for this? The treatment is also the breast milk. The more the baby will feed the breast milk, the more the dehydration will be treated and the more the baby will urinate okay breast milk jaundice presenting as prolonged jaundice is seen in well babies who are thriving have normal clinical examination apart from clinical jaundice and there is no evidence of hemolysis or infection parents should be reassured and breastfeeding continued this is very important what what will be the treatment option reassurance and breastfeeding continuation um, alternatively there will be more hepatic bilirubin lo load can be found so these mechanism are still not unproven so what you will suggest in case of breast milk jaundice you will tell them to reassure that this is, this is very common for the children and the breastfeed children and you will have to continue the most of the time the parents will ask you that uh, you are saying doctor you are saying that this breast milk is doing jaundice so why should i continue breast milk we all know this is a complete meal for a newborn and this breast milk is the ultimate treatment for this newborn. Jaundice from other cause may also be, have to be ruled out including blood group incompatibility, most commonly rhesus or, or ABU incompatibility. Other causes of hemolysis like breaking down of red blood cell, sepsis, liver disease, bruising and metabolic disorder, deficiency of a particular enzyme like G6PD and can cause severe neonatal jaundice g6pd deficiency are more common in certain geographic or ethnic group like mediterranean and african this is very important whenever in a question in hematology class we are going to study this whenever you are seeing that a mediterranean and a african child is coming and severe anemia after birth we will think about some g6pd problem because the ethnicity and geographical uh, option is very significant in case of G6PD. Prolonged conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, hyperbilirubinemia. What I told you before, whenever there is conjugated bilirubin is more in the blood, it is always a serious condition. So, an important diagnosis to make in these babies is biliary, biliary atresia as the outcome is much better if this condition can be operated before 8 weeks of age. Remember, if biliary atresia is treated within the 8 weeks of age, the outcome is very good. Abdominal ultrasound and radioisotope scan are undertaken to confirm this diagnosis prior to referral to one of the specialist level liver services in the UK. So, in, if in a district level hospital, you have a child who is having 
jaundice as this is pathological jaundice this child might have jaundice within the first 24 hours of life and this child might uh, be very sick since day one and you see the baby is passing pale stool we all know that in neonatal period the meuconium is very dark in color very dark green or blackish color but if you see a child is passing pale stool less yellow or whitish whitish chalky stool this is very significant in case of biliary atresia the child will pass whitish chalky white stool then at that point you have to decide about think about biliary atresia and you have to do abdominal ultrasound and radio isotope scan and then you have to refer to the specialist liver services so the common cause of prolonged conjugated jaundice are these some intrauterine infection like torch infection we all know the torch toxoplasma rubella cmv neonatal hepatitis biliary atresia Cholecystic cyst. This is very important and another uh, significant cause to refer for earlier. Parenteral nutrition related metabolic problem like cystic fibrosis, alpha one antitrypsin deficiency, galactosemia, intrahepatic cholestasis syndrome, and familial problems. Okay, this chapter is very important. This jaundice will come on and off, and without the biliary atresia topic, no MRCPCH exam is going to help. Uh, there is some. Uh, very important a very hot topic I must say like jaundice biliary atresia um, diabetes cystic fibrosis asthma there is a few other topics which are very important okay so biliary atresia is one of them always try to consider or engulf biliary atresia among you because no question cannot be uh, missed if it is coming from biliary atresia okay